How are you, Michael? So similar. So good. Thanks. How are you? Good. I'm very wealthy. I'm Dina. Um, Hi, we met Dina. like many years ago. You actually performed on breakfast television. I think it was like 2006 or something. Yes. R right. What? And oh then my, God, my so mom old. and I went to go see you live a couple of years ago with CHFI. And yeah. she just adores, she calls you her Michael. You're her Michael. I am, I am her Michael. She's right. And now, mama. yeah. And now we have a scent for her too. So let's talk <laughs> about how you got into the scent making business. Well, I got into it, but I was, it was, I was wrestled into it. To be honest. Mm -hmm. I, when the, when the idea first came, I, when it just was so outside of the box for me. Um, I I didn't want anything to do with it. And um, my manager said, hey, listen, kid, you know, it's not much different than creating music. You get to take a certain amount of notes and you get to be creative. And I said, well, listen, if I do this, Bruce, then I want to, I have to be involved because there's no way that I will be able to take the cringe of going on television and talking about it if <clears throat> if it's just my my face that's been <laughs> stuck on the yeah, brand. So I, get it. I went, I went, I traveled, I went and... Um, hung out with all these very fancy French perfumers and, um, and I created this, these fragrances and it was actually a lot of fun and I learned a lot. Cool. And uh, the more I got involved, the less cringy it felt. And, and just uh, in time for the holidays, we see the beautiful tree behind you. Do you have yeah. the perfect buble way to apply it? Do you have like just the touch behind the ear method? Do you prefer the wrist? Do you prefer like walking into the perfume? I'm like a caveman. So it's more like a huh, and then just like, <laughs> just kind of, yeah. I it's funny, my, <laughs> my, my kids love it, believe it or not. And I don't let them do it because I don't, I'm not sure about kids and, and, and perfume. Right. But I know they want to. Um, and I'll like catch my kid in the bathroom trying to apply it. <laughs> <laughs> or I'll come you out and I'll smell it smell coming. Like, I can yeah. smell you. You smell like that. Yeah. 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 yeah, there's no hiding it. You smell them like from 10 feet away, right? When it's too no. much? Yeah. Okay, so we need to talk about the fact that you are synonymous with all things Christmas. Truly, your voice, it's incredible. And now you have this brand new single, this hit. It's adorable. The video is awesome. You're playing the piano on the pool. Oh, you saw it? The you saw it with Dolly? Yes, yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. How cool. did that come to be? Did she call you up and you're like, okay, it's the legend. She, well, first she wrote me a letter and uh, she wrote me an email. Okay. And, um, and I've told this story a few times, but I don't mind telling it again. You know, you get asked to do a lot of duets and stuff. Uh, you know, every year you'll have 11 or 12 different artists yeah. from all over the world who will, you know, write you and through the management and say, would you sing this with me? Or they'll send you a song and you listen to the song and then you think, is it for me? Does it work? Does it, you know, is this the direction we want to go? Or do I have other duets that I have to worry about? Um, but with Dolly, I got the letter. And I just replied, yes. I didn't even listen, to be honest with you. I didn't listen until afterwards because when someone who's as iconic and incredible and is such a prolific songwriter calls and asks you to do something with them, you just do it. And there's been a few of those times in my life. Um, I would say Tony Bennett calling me was one of those times where I just said yes. Uh, Van Morrison, who I've always been a huge fan of, he called and asked me to do a duet and I just jumped. I just jumped to it. So with Dolly, it was the same thing. And um, she's just such a, she's just such a great lady. And she gave me carte blanche. She basically said, listen, I've written a song, but you have a, a, autonomy in, in however you want to do it and however you want to figure it out. So it was, you know, obviously all done COVID friendly with, uh, with Zoom. Um, but it's turned out so, I mean, it's turned out to be so great. And uh, I think more than ever before with what we're going through in the world, we really need Christmas to come. Mm -hmm. I think the, the the season brings hope and and um, and joy and and people a little kinder and and more gentle with each other. And so I Mike, really was excited. Make me cry. About it. I was it's like, the truth. It's the truth. And I've always cry. it's so true. And I and I and I there was a moment where a few years ago, I'd say five six years ago, I felt like I had been in the middle of whatever it was six Christmas specials and. Every Christmas, it was, you know, okay, Mike, you know, we got to go and do press. And I started to think, well, this isn't why I made the record. And uh, Christmas for me is not about just uh, selling and selling and selling. And so I got a little turned off and I started to get a little bit 
I burnt out on it. And then I had my kids and um, just, you know, living through them and seeing it through their eyes has made me even more uh, into Christmas than I was before. So. Such a blessing. So do you listen to your music over the holidays? Who's your go-to? You mentioned Bennett. It's funny. Uh -huh. I heard two guys arguing. Who do you think's better? Sinatra or Buble? Like you're being talked about around the world all the time. You are on that level of icon yourself with your that's voice, so, with your music. That's some completely ridiculous, isn't it? I was it like, Buble, all ridiculous. the way, Buble. <laughs> oh, sure. <laughs> uh, um, you know, I, um, I don't know what to say. I just feel really lucky. I mean, it, it, it comes from a genuine place. I think that's why it's worked the way it has. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, in my house, we listen to, yeah, they like, they like my version of Jingle Bells, but we listen to a lot of Justin Bieber. Cute. Um, I still don't know what he's saying in, in one of those songs. I don't get it. He's shorty with you, shorty with you, under the missile. And I still don't understand what shorty with you. Maybe I mean, I've got it wrong. I don't know. I guess shorty is like the affectionate term for the girlfriend is shorty with you. Maybe I'm wrong. Don't ask me. Yeah, I always, <laughs> You've come I always, to the wrong place. Okay. I always wondered if it was Justin who, who's not as tall. <laughs> and he, maybe he was saying, hey, it's me, Shorty with you. Shorty with I'm you. I'm Shorty with you. I don't know. What about Elvis? Oh, Elvis, of course. Uh, 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 That's my mom's jam, uh, too. Doo -doo -doo. Oh, I love that album. What I about a little? Album. Oh, I love album. I love, I love, um, man, I love a lot of you. I love Kelly Clarkson had a record a few years ago that I really, really liked. Jan Arden put out a Christmas oh. record. And um, what's the song that goes? Let the devil be ringing, daughter. That, what's it, what's it I don't know, but that sounds beautiful. <laughs> oh, it's so you know good. Dominic the Donkey? The Can I request that you do Dominic the Donkey? Do you know the Christmas carol called Dominic the Donkey? Jingity jing, ee ah, ee ah. It's, it's Dominic the Donkey. Jingity jing, ee ah, ee ah. The Italian <laughs> Christmas donkey. La I know la, it. la la. I brought you a panettone. Hey, a panettone. So, see? Now, Christmas cake. This is the Italian Christmas cake. Do you say yay or nay to this? Oh, are you kidding me? That is something that I get and give to all. I mean, I'm Italian. I'm a, yes. I'm, people don't know this. Half, Maybe they right? don't know. I'm a dual citizen of yeah. Canada and Italy. So yeah, we, that's, that's, a big, that's a big delicious deal. Thank Especially you. you. Cut it up thin and you toast it. Ooh. Yes, you can make French toast with it. That exactly. Can I or ask you a question? Yeah. Are you in your home right now? Yeah, yeah, your, why? You're, I love your fireplace. Oh my gosh. They, can we talk about how I'm sweating for you right now? In this oh, you ugly Christmas, Christmas sweater. sweater? I, oh. It's like 30 degrees for some reason in Toronto today. <laughs> what is no. happening, Michael? Yes, it's oh, 24 no. degrees. There, it feels like mid-July. It's cold BC, in Vancouver. Right? Yeah, I'm in Vancouver and it, it snowed a little bit last night. What made you stay it's... there, by the way? I know you get a little bit though, it melts. What made you stay in Canada? Oh. Um, could have lived anywhere, right? I could have. Yeah. I, this is an interesting question. And a lot of people ask me this question and, mm -hmm. um, I love our country. I don't know what else to say. I just feel like we're so privileged to, to, to live in, in a place like this. And, um, why would I ever go? Like, I just, okay. My taxes are really high. Yes. But you know what? It's worth every penny. I would never go. I just love the people here. I love um, I love who we are. And whenever any of my American friends ask why, I ask them why they stick a Canadian flag sticker on their luggage. Mm -hmm. so, Enough said. Uh, yeah. And your family is so grounded. I happen to be Instagram pen pals with one Brandy Buble. I oh. love her. She was on uh, BT a few years ago promoting yep. her children's book. Yep. So Oceania amazing. Octopus. Right? Just like you. I know you have another sister. She's the middle child like I am. And do you keep in touch? Like, what's the holidays going to look like? Do you do the virtual Zoom calls? How, how have you been keeping in touch with family? Well, I think like every other family, we have, um, it's funny. It's, it's, we talk every single day and my mom is devastated, devastated mm -hmm. because, you know, she loves Christmas and we're all together. And um, our government just issued uh, some, some announcements yesterday that say that we can't have anyone uh, who isn't actually living with us in the immediate family. So yeah, the thought of uh, having that big family dinner is obviously not looking good. Um, yeah. But, you know, we just try to, to do this. We just try to Zoom and, and you know, we were on a big group chat and um, 
I'm, I'm sorry. I, I'm, I have to filter myself sometimes. Okay. Just that every morning, every morning, my dad, uh, he... will bleep it. <laughs> no, my dad, my, my, every morning on our, our group chat, my dad will send like a, um, his, uh, what do you call it? His like, uh, his like cartoon character thing. What do they call it? Oh, them? yeah, yeah. Like the little bitmoji? Yeah, like, like they'll put yeah, his yeah, bitmoji yeah. and it'll be like him, uh, <laughs> you know, with a co- <laughs> his bitmoji with a coffee cup and... Uh, but I'll always, I'll always edit it and draw really phallic, terrible things. <laughs> like candy canes and no, like bars? much, yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, okay. Much, much worse. So every day he like goes like, oh, he's doing it again. <laughs> he's turning, he's turning my coffee cup into a, yeah. So uh, it's, you know what? Uh, without getting too dark, uh, three years ago, um, we spent Christmas at a hospital, mm-hmm. and we, we, we never left that hospital, and so even though we're looking at COVID and we're looking at um, not being able to be together, I would say this Christmas is eight zillion times better than that Christmas. And I think anytime we ever get down, we just, uh, we just get our perspective from there and we think about how lucky we are and we're so grateful. So I keep saying this, but I tell my friends, it's so important for those people out there. And I know we talk about this and it seems like a cliche, but, you know, there's people that you love and they're alone. And mm-hmm. even though they don't tell you, they're, they're hurting. And, and a lot of people have a lot of, you know, obviously serious mental health issues. And it's so important for us to mm-hmm. take your time to pick up the phone, to call somebody on Zoom, even if you feel like you're driving them nuts, just so that they know you're there and they know you're thinking about them. And uh, it's going to be one of those Christmases where we all have to be really extra sensitive to that. I think. Yeah. Michael, thank you. You are a true gift to us for a million reasons. You have a beautiful heart, a beautiful family, and a beautiful voice. Your music lifts us, and now we can have a piece of you with your sense, too. So thank you for everything. Love to you and your family. Love to you, and go give your mom a COVID-friendly hug for me. Can you say uh, Merry Christmas, Mary? Yeah. Hi, Mary. It's Michael Buble, and I love you way too much. I hope you have a beautiful Merry Christmas. See you soon. Thank you. You totally made her year. Thanks, Michael. Love to to you. You too.